This is Time Citizen Editor Sarah Conrad Baranowski, and I'm back for another chat with Dr. Katie Haverkamp uh, from Hanson Family Hospital, Iowa Falls Clinic. Thanks, Katie, for joining me again. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Okay, so we haven't talked in a while. All kinds of things have happened. One, you got vaccinated. Many people, well, some people have gotten vaccinated. So let's start off with that because I think that's kind of the topic on everybody's mind right now. Um, how do we get a shot? Do you know? Okay. Um, well, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> it's uh, so we're trying our best as soon as we get vaccines in Hardin County to get them into arms. So public health has been working very hard to set up vaccination clinics as soon as they get the vaccine so that they can get more and have more vaccines. Um, starting out, you know, you can sign up for the, uh, the form that public health has out. I know that the Time Citizen has had it, the KIFG has had it, um, uh, and getting your information there. That's an information database that public health is uh, letting out when they have more vaccines so that you can sign up and get signed up for those vaccine clinics. Of course, supply is much less than demand, so we all need to be a little bit patient with that, but patience is hard. Um, I also know that within this next month that the pharmacies, some of the pharmacies in town, I think Hy-Vee, I think uh, uh, Clinic Pharmacy maybe, and I'm not sure about Walmart, but I know that some of the other pharmacies are starting to take names. Uh, they don't have the vaccine yet, but they're trying to be prepared that they uh, can start giving their vaccines and, and they still have to go by the protocol of, you know, who's phase one, A, B, who's phase two. Um, and we just keep signing up. You can sign up at most multiple places for information or availability. You can also search online, but um, it's just going to take a little bit of time to get everybody vaccinated. Right, uh, and we're still it, in it, one, sorry, we're still in 1B, so it's 65 and older, K through 12 educators, um, first responders, like I can't go and get a vaccine. I mean, I can still fill out the form from County Public Health, but they're not gonna say, hey, Sarah, come on in and get a vaccine. We really wanna get those older people and the people who are, or, or whose occupation puts them in close contact with people vaccinated. Yes, we, we certainly wanna get those um, educators definitely vaccinated so that they can go back and have those kiddos back safely. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, those first responders and healthcare workers, of course. So, yep. And as soon as we've kind of met those uh, goals, then we go on to the next list and that'll be news splashed around as well. But what I do want to say is that um, you have to have a really good reason not to get the vaccine when it's your turn. Okay. Almost everybody can get the vaccine. The only reason that you can't get the vaccine is if you have a known severe allergy to any of the ingredients of the vaccine. And that's something called polyethylene glycol for the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. But um, you should have a really good reason not to get it because, you know, we know how many people die a day of COVID um, and how many people have you heard of dying of the vaccine? Not very many, um, at zero. So again, have a good reason to get it. And people will have reactions, people will have side effects from it, and that's normal, that you know that the vaccine is working then. You know that um, if you have a sore arm or if you're achy or tired, that means that your body's really revving up its immune system so that uh, you're ready to fight when it gets in contact with COVID. So please, 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 everybody get your vaccine if it's available to you. Right, and if you have questions about the vaccines and the trials they went through, I think you can find that all on the FDA site. Yeah. Um, if you want to read through to, yeah. to get the information yourself, not just from social media, but actually go to the source and get the information. Right. FDA and then CDC.gov has a lot of information regarding everything Rona. Right. So um, how are things going at the hospital lately? Well, I mean, uh, our hospital, like around the nation, numbers are down. So that's good. Less testing and less positives, but it's still not zero and it's still not to um, where you know, we think that there's a low community spread. There's still quite a bit of community spread. And, um, but uh, our numbers are down in our COVID unit as well. So that's a big win. Uh, just wanted to remind everybody that at the hospital, you can we are still giving people what we call the mo uh, monoclonal antibody. Um, if people remember Regeneron from when the president uh, had his coronavirus infection, it's uh, a infusion that we can give early on in the, um, 
in the disease process to people who are high risk of complications. So if your mom or somebody that you know has a lot of medical problems or diabetes or high blood pressure and they're sick, don't let them just continue to be sick. Let um, their healthcare provider know and ask them if they would qualify for any early treatments for COVID. And that's so, something and you we can just talk to your provider. Locally. Yeah, like, and we're still hospitalizing people locally uh, for COVID um, that need oxygen therapy and the um, remdesivirs and the dexamethasones and things. So anything non-ICU, we can still do here at uh, Hanson Family Hospital. Okay. So also big news at the hospital is that we are opening up to a support person. Um, if you, right now we hadn't let anyone in with anybody else unless absolutely, absolutely necessary, but now everyone gets person. So if you need somebody else to be your eyes and your ears, or if you're hospitalized, you can have a person that can come in if you are in need of help and support. So no visitors yet, but again, we're opening it up to that uh, one person support person, which is a And that's big. big. That's been, I mean, almost a year, it's right? Huge. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's been kind of lonely in the hallways, but in, in, uh, of course, yeah, everybody course still wears masks and everybody still does the things, but, um, but yes, that is huge. Yeah, well, good. One, one closer step, I think. Um, so let's talk about the, the governor last Friday um, wrote or signed a new proclamation that rolled back some of the mitigation um, efforts that she had put in place last fall. So um, the limited mask mandate has been eliminated. Um, there are no longer occupancy, occupancy restrictions for bars and restaurants. Basically, businesses can open, anybody can be anywhere um, without a mask. So there's been some controversy about this because like you said, COVID is still spreading in our communities. So what should we do? I mean, what is, what's the best practice? Is it, especially now that also we're seeing some people get vaccinated. I mean, should we still be acting like we've always acted or can we kind of let our guard down a little bit? I say party on. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> That's your life motto, no. right? <laughs> Life motto, party on. Um, you know, so COVID is still around. You know, the basic things are still there, you know, and you still have to look at the other person in front of you and assume that either you have COVID and you're giving it to them or they have COVID and they're giving it to you. And if you're all cool with that and you feel pretty comfortable with that, then again, go, everybody's got to have a different risk tolerance. But our vulnerable are still vulnerable to the disease. Um, and we have to still protect our vulnerable and we have to still be cognizant that maybe other people still don't want to share our breath. So I think the prudent thing to do, the public health thing to do, the safest thing to do is when in doubt wear a mask and continue to use your social distancing skills. Now you, everybody kind of has their nest and uh, people that they feel comfortable being around. The people I feel the most comfortable being around are the people who have had the Rona. I'm like, yeah, these are my people. I can hang out with them. Um, or at least for, you know, you can feel a little bit more comfortable for the first 90 days that they have it. But um, again, we're, we're not out of the woods yet. And with these new variants, we don't know, we don't know what we don't know. And my biggest fear with the new variants is that it's going to affect the people that, that kind of were skate free the first time. You know, maybe it's gonna affect teenagers more or the healthier people more. And they are saying that it might be a little bit more deadly and a lot more contagious. So um, although we don't have the mask mandate or at least it's not from our governor, it still is a good thing to do and we should listen to our business owners and such. Um, I for one still don't feel real comfortable with going into a restaurant in which every booth is filled or every table is filled um, or, you know, to, um, uh, to a crowded place, I kind of get nervous and kind of get a little bit sweaty and look for the exit and that I don't have to hang out too much anymore. So the time is coming. And when we, when the vaccine has been out enough that most of us have been vaccinated, that's when we'll probably just have to wear our masks in certain, certain situations and a lot less on our day-to-day -day activity, but we're not there yet. And we're not there tomorrow and we're not there by spring break. This is looking more towards a summer or fall. And we don't know, you know, again, we can't promise for it. We don't know, especially with the newer variants, but I feel really good about our numbers coming down. And I feel very good about um, people being accepting and really tolerating the vaccine well. So, you know, as Iowans, we just need to know that we can do the right thing and keep doing the right thing and uh, following protocols 
keep us safe and to keep our kids in school. Really. Yeah. I mean, that's what we want to do. And I have no problem with opening things up. I just want people to be cognizant of wearing their mask in, in front of other people that maybe don't want to share their breath. Um, you brought up the variants and I know the, the UK variant of COVID has been found in Iowa and I read a lot of news articles and some of them say now we should be double masking, you know, wearing like the, the, the medical mask underneath maybe a cloth mask. Do you think mm -hmm. we need to do that? Is that something we should be concerned about? Um, the idea is that the, the double masking makes sure that your droplets stay near you and it keeps other people's droplets away. Um, I don't know. How, how worried or how concerned If I couldn't be? socially distance, I would feel more strongly about that. I think in Iowa and I think about how we're opened up to things that we're not face to face and shoulder to shoulder with people. I have no problems with this single mask. But um, if I was going through Grand Central Station or if I didn't have the option to be able to socially distance, if I was walking down the streets of New York City, yeah, it's a great idea. But um, I feel like we can keep our distance around different people around here. And I think if they have their mask on and I have my mask on, we're doing pretty good. And you're I'm vaccinated now, right? Yet. Excuse what? me. I said, I'm not a double masker yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say you're vaccinated now, right? So yeah, you really can't I can do whatever on. I want. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's 95% effective. It's not 100% effective. So I, you know, I'm still social distancing from my mother. I'm wearing a mask if I have to get too close to her, um, you know, and I just uh, sometimes a brief photo op and in a way and holding your breath, you know. So again, I, because she hasn't been fully vaccinated because I, even though I have been, I just, you know, hold, try and hold myself to a little bit um, higher standard. Everybody makes mistakes, everybody has slips, but it, for the most part, I'm just trying to still be really careful around um, people I don't want to infect. Right, right. And so that's why, I mean, I, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I'm, I'm getting my second dose soon, a couple weeks, I'm going to go, whatever hug my grandmother or something or my grandma's gonna hug me or whatever but we should still mm -hmm. be very aware of the fact that as you've said we're sharing breath that you know it's not 100 percent effective um we should still need to be careful right yeah 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 and um is it safer most definitely it's safer but it is it um 100 percent safe no and there's still you know we just Again, I think that if you wanted to go visit her, but still be doing the precautions and, or as far as not, you know, shoulder to shoulder all the time and all that sort of thing, I just, yeah, we're going to have less and less, we're, we still need to keep in mind our risk tolerance. Right. That's a good guideline. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else you want to add COVID related or non-COVID related? We can talk about other things. We can just turn this into a regular talk show. There you go. I think so. Um, yeah, no, I think I covered what I wanted to, to cover. And again, if you get, if you have people uh, having questions or have certain uh, things they want covered, I'm happy to do that at this venue or written or what have you. So yeah, I'll collect any questions. Um, and I know a lot of vaccine questions right now are trying to get those answered, but so much yeah, stuff think, around you know, you that can, has been known. Yeah, you can get lost in, in, in the details, but you know, big picture, the vaccine is good all of the vaccines are good. Get the vaccine that is in front of you. Um, and uh, virus is bad. Trying to stay away from getting the virus, you know, whether it be masked, double masked or whatever, it's still around and it's still out there. And if you're not thinking of yourself, think of others. And that's the big thing because I, you know, I still don't want the virus, but the reason I wear a mask isn't necessarily be about me. It's about not wanting to give it to others. And that's mm -hmm. still a thing. And we want to keep our numbers down. I mean, it's good to have numbers Amen. that are down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me again, Katie. This is always very informative and helpful to hear it from someone who knows what they're talking about and is local and we know. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. All right.